residents are tired of this here, and it's up to us to actually do something about it. So I want you all to log on, check on and check on our website every week and tell somebody about it, because we're going to make a difference whether you like it or not. You're either with us or you're against us. But the bottom line is we're going to be successful at making a change here at Ocean Bay Houses, a.k.a. Edgemere, a.k.a. Vietnam. And this is why they call it Vietnam, because it still looks like they bombed this area. It's like Hiroshima or something like that to bring down the spirit of the people. And this is definitely something that we need to put a stop to. Again, I came here not too long ago. It should have been done. It should have been finished. They haven't even finished it. They haven't even made an attempt to finish this here construction harbor that's here in Edgeman Projects, now known as Ocean Bay Houses. Hello, everybody. My name is Greg. This is my girlfriend, Jada. And recently, we've just been through the rough time of our life. Greg and Janata were innocent victims in a random bus that affected 25 at Ocean Bay Houses in Far Rockaway, Queens, New York. This went on April 1st and by the 3rd, their names were in the paper and on the internet to be labeled as criminals. What's up with that? What's up with that? Yeah, it's like waking up from a bad dream. On August, I mean on April 1st, 2009, police bum rushed in my crib, told them they had a search warrant. They searched my house, tore my house upside down. Mm. Took my kids, ACS done, took my kids and all, everything for nothing. For disorderly conduct, and I don't really think that's mm. right. You know what I mean? Because disorderly conduct happens on the outside. It doesn't happen on the inside. You can't come in my house and say I was disorderly mm. when you inside of my house. Like, I don't feel that's right. Mm -hmm. And I really need help with somebody to do something about this for it happened to somebody else. And somebody could have died, you know what I mean? Somebody mm -hmm. could have died with that. They had their guns drawn. My kids was butt, like they running around wow. with their night, they 90s on. Mm -hmm. It was 6 o'clock in the morning. And I go to court and they give me a disorderly conduct. And I don't think that's right. I get charged with disorderly conduct for nothing. What's, what happened with the children? They still in ACS custody? or? Well, my girlfriend beat the case on the ACS custody, you know what I mean? My girlfriend beat the case, but I'm going through it now. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going back and forth to beat the case. I don't see why I gotta go through it back and forth to get to beat the case for disorderly conduct. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm not, I wasn't disorderly to them. I might have been disorderly to, to the cops, but yeah, I wasn't disorderly to the kids. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Then how did they address you? Did they, they arrest you or did they, they lock they, you up? They came night? in, they said, this NYPD, everybody on the ground. Now, meanwhile, my grandfather is 65 years old and had a triple bypass surgery. That's the only And they're doing all this to me. Mm. Lord have mercy. Man. I'm not going to run no place. Man had a triple bypass on his heart. And, he and, and you, you know that little light? That little light? One of the cops was playing with his gun. You know the little red light? Yeah, the, little, the dot, the red dot. Right. And yes. he was playing with the gun, putting the dot all on the wall. You, 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 I don't know which one it was. Yes, they God. had him face down wow. on the floor. Wow. I think that was disrespectful. He could have had a heart attack. He could have had a heart attack. They yeah, exactly. He could have had a heart attack or something, you know what I mean? And Hold you know on. that turn. was a cuff because it's yeah, a turn. sharp cut. Yeah, look at it. Uh, yup, right here mm -hmm. and right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. You got that? Yes, sir. That came from the handcuffs. And they startled us, you know what I mean? We thought somebody was playing the April Fool's joke. Mm hmm but it was really the narcotics division talking about they had a search warrant. They seen people coming back and forth buying 
narcotics out of my house, which they lied. They didn't see nobody coming in and out of this house buying anything. They mm. might have seen a couple of kids coming in and out of the house playing with mine, but other than that, they didn't see nothing. And I don't think that's right because right now I really, I really don't feel it. I really want to sue them. I want to, I want to do everything in the book to them so they can stop. They harassed young guys every day. I look out my window every day. Mm -hmm. They grabbing somebody up. They can't, you can't even walk down the block no more mm -hmm. without getting stopped by the police. You can't do it. And it's hard right now. It's hard for everybody. I work for construction. I got a construction job. Mm -hmm. So what? I so got money in my pocket. I'm, I'm eligible right. to have money in my pocket. Right. I don't see in the law where it say I can't hold money in my pocket. Right. And you're you not doing I mean? nothing illegal. And nothing you just got illegal. treated like you were doing something illegal. Exactly. You got rights as a human being yeah. on this planet. Exactly. That's, exactly. The bottom line. That's the bottom line. I got rights. And I, I feel they violated my rights, and now I don't yeah, even feel like I got rights no more. I don't even feel like I got mm -hmm. rights no more. How did they violate, you say they violated your two sisters? They violated my rights because I never had been arrested, mm -hmm. and this was my first time. I told the officer, can you handcuff me from the front? He said no. He twisted my hand real hard and handcuffed me tight. Um, before that, they put the handcuffs on me. I was in my pajamas. Two male mm -hmm. cops took me in the back. Pat me down, watch me put my jeans on, my sneakers, my shirt, mm -hmm. and my jacket on because there was no female officer around and I felt as though I'd been harassed. Early that morning, I was crying, I was nervous, I didn't know what was going on. I just wanted to leave right away. I just wanted to run away from them because they were scaring me. Mm -hmm. And when the lady, when my legal aide said you're you're pleading guilty to this holy conduct, I didn't know what that meant because I don't know the laws. Mm -hmm. I have not been arrested before in my life. I'm 24 years so old. So they forced you to, or yes, forced they you forced to make a, to plead a plea? Guilty. You didn't have to plead guilty to And me. that was not one of my charges. You understand? All my charges got dismissed. Some charges that I was not informed until I seen the judge. And I, when she told me I was coming home, all I cared about was coming home to see my daughters. And when right, I came so you to, did what you had to do to get yes, home. Yes, to get home to my kids. Mm -hmm. And when I came home to his mother's house, she said ACS took the kids. And I'm like, oh my God, my kids never been through the system. I have a four-year-old and a one-year-old. And I have never been through that experience in my life. It was like our first arrest, my kids taken away from me first time. Everything happened so fast. And I, thank God, yesterday I beat the case. But it's like me and him got to be separated because he still has an order of protection against the kids for no reason. Wait, wait. No. Run that by me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He has an order of protection. They put an order of protection against me and they him. Fought, they forced the order of protection. Oh, yes. against, against you? Yes. Yes. This, this is the body keep away from the children. Yes. This is what's going on every day. This is what's going on every day. We didn't know where the kids was at in ACS. Like, the lady wouldn't call me, and when she did call me, it was a black number. She just told me her name was Debbie. She was an ACS supervisor that was a foster parent. So I felt as though she was double dipping, you know? That's like right. me working for welfare and collecting food stamps and cash. Right, like, right, right. I felt as though she my kids should have stayed with his mother. Interest. His mother is the grandmother, and she takes good care of children. She babysits, you know? So I was hurt, and I've been through a lot. I have a journal I write in every day because I cry every day. The fact that I missed 12 days of my children's life, you know? I'm always with them. They're always with me and their father, and I just felt like that illegal search caused drama and traumatized in our lives. Illegal search and seizure. Mm -hmm. I just feel let's as though talk about we need to sue. <laughs> we let's need talk something. about the children. You have a major case on you. What, what ha how were the children treated? Did they tell you about where they were? And oh, then where they was at. The, um, the lady beat my daughter for spilling a bowl of oatmeal. Yes. What do you mean by beat? First, like, they hit the your daughter? The, the first time I seen my daughter on the first visit, that she was, ran to me like, Daddy, the lady beat me. That was I said, what eight. lady beat you? From and April 1st to 4-8. She was like, we seen the kids. She we said, um, kids. I said, why the lady beat you? I said, hold up, the lady beat you? Why she beat you?